I'm John Keating. Welcome to online worship on behalf of St. Stephen Lutheran Church in Syracuse and St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Liverpool, New York. You know, our churches may be closed and the doors to our building may be closed, but our ministry, our ministry is far from closed. Worship continues through our videos, allowing us to gather virtually for prayer, for praise, and most importantly, for pause. During this time of Christmas, we are in awe at the birth of such a tiny baby who would become the Savior and the Messiah of our broken world. I invite you all to participate fully in worship. Listen for how the readings, the sermon, the prayers, and the hymns, they're speaking to us. Join the celebration of the words of the hymns and the prayers which are posted and they're just calling for each of our voices. I urge you to stay with us until the end of this video to hear and to see all of the announcements, including those that may be posted in the credits. The psalmist calls on the natural world, the celestial bodies, fire and earth, creatures, and all humanity to praise God. The voices of Simeon and the 84-year-old Anna just join the chorus today, recognizing what God is doing in Jesus. Simeon's song is often sung after communion, for we have seen God's salvation in the assembled community, and we have held Jesus in our hands in the bread. Then, like the prophet Anna, we tell of Jesus to all who look for the healing of the world. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning and who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and the downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive our sins to those we know and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us for our sins, not through our own works, but through Jesus Christ, made known to all people. With all who come to the manger, rejoice, rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. Oh 
The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature, and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown to be sprung up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all nations. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake, I shall not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm 148. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise God in the heights. Praise the Lord, all you angels. Sing praise, all you hosts of heaven. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Sing praise, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord, heaven of heavens, and you waters from the heavens above. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded and they were created, who made them stand fast and forever and ever, giving them a law that shall not pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and fog, tempestuous wind doing God's will, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, sovereigns of the earth and all peoples, princes and all the rulers of the world, young men and maidens, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name only is exalted, whose splendor is over the earth and heaven. The Lord has raised up strength for the people and praise for all the faithful servants, the children of Israel, a people who are near the Lord. Hallelujah. A reading from Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. 
Now when the time had came, come for their purification according to the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary brought Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the, the Lord as it was written in the law of the Lord. It says, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord. It says, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit rested upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him up in his arms, and praising God, he said, Master, now you are dismissing your servants in peace. According to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the Lord's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about this child. And then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Now there was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phmenuel, but the tribe of Asher, and she was a great age, and having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. You see, she never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. And at that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text on this first Sunday of Christmas includes a gospel lesson we call the Song of Simeon. It ranges from verses 29 to 32, really. And it goes like this, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace. According to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation of the Gentiles and for the glory of your people, O Israel. There's four more days. Four more days, everybody, in 2020, and it will be history. It's funny how something totally symbolic like the numbers on a calendar can make people feel like they're starting something over again with something brand new, isn't it? A new year means a new slate, a new opportunity, a new chance for things to work out right, a vaccine, and an end to a pandemic, and of course, a New Year's resolution, which may or may not happen. Probably not in my case, but that's half the fun anyways, because it's all about new possibilities. Are any of us going to feel sorry to see 2020 go? Will we feel bad for last year that we won't be in it any longer? After all, who mourns the death of the old year? The death of 2020, whose birth we cheered only 360 Four days ago, 362 days ago. Nah, I don't think so. 
or happy it's going, at least I am happy it's going, with only four days remaining, there's almost no hope left to squeeze anything out of it. Especially when a new year abounding in hope is right around the corner. Maybe it's because our calendar is, is all about symbolism. So it, it really doesn't matter, I guess. Or maybe it's because we don't want to face the loss of hope. And it matters even in the small stuff sometimes, doesn't it? It's true, we're always running away from the things that give us no hope, and it's even more clear in the stuff that actually does matter. It matters, especially in our words and our action. Try being friendly with someone who is suffering. Try talking to someone who's had a terminal disease. Try being there for someone condemned to die. Try visiting with someone who's been told that there's no hope for someone who believes that there is no hope. Someone for whom death itself is right around the corner. It's one of the most difficult and important things that we will ever do. In our text today, Simeon did have hope. The hope that there would always be a New Year's Day for him, life for him. As long as God waited to send his son, there would always be a tomorrow for Simeon. After all, it says it had been revealed to Simeon by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had been seen the Lord's Messiah, the Christ. Now, what would you do with a promise like that? A promise that let you know that as long as you hadn't seen the Lord's Messiah, there would most certainly be a tomorrow for you, no matter what. What could possibly make you fear? You would always have the hope of tomorrow. The hope we have every New Year's Day, each and every day. That would be awesome. Until one day, a young unwed mother and her boyfriend, they bring an eight um, an eight-day-old baby to the temple for circumcision and the appointed offering. And then the Holy Spirit reveals to Simeon that this child, in fact, the Lord's Messiah, the Savior. And on this day for Simeon, God's word has been fulfilled. Therefore, tomorrow for him will never come again. Think about that for a minute. Could we even imagine such a day? Could we bear it if God came right out and told us, you know, this is the day that you're going to die. And there is no promises about how it will come. No promises that death will be painless. No promises that, that we will breathe our last breath in peace. Not even that we will have a good and a simple and easy death. Just on this certain day, you will die. It may be tomorrow, it may be next week, it may be next month, or it may be next year. The only thing that is certain is that there's nothing you can do to stop it. That's pretty frightening to me. And yet, to God's pronouncement, Simeon responds, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared for the presence of all peoples a light of revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. Lord, you are letting your servant depart in peace. A peace greater than the promise of not dying. A peace greater than a pleasant death. A peace greater than even knowing the exact day. For now, now, Simeon has seen his Savior. His eyes have seen God's salvation prepared in the presence of all people. Simeon has seen the very light of God in a child, a simple child named Jesus. The light that would bring others out of darkness. The light that was itself the glory of all of God's people. And yes, this meant by seeing Christ that death was right around the corner. But Simeon was ready. He knew that where death was, 
Christ was also right around the corner. The Savior comes to, to be the light in our darkness, even as death and sickness, violence and pandemic, death and, and, and illness seem to overshadow us. Jesus overcomes it all with the ultimate trap to destroy darkness and death. Jesus uses himself as the bait. And by Jesus going to the cross, Simeon's prediction was right. A sword would indeed pierce his mother's heart. Imagine watching her son die, that one promised by God, the one whom she birthed and raised and watched grow up, the one whom she loved and who she followed. Her own beloved son was crucified on behalf of the world. Yet Jesus does not turn away from this task, knowing that he goes to the cross for us to swallow up death forever. You see, God sent us a Savior, and our salvation, which we could never earn, never earn ourselves, comes to us through Jesus Christ and in the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. It's funny how, how it's not by anything that we've done, but it's by everything that he has done. The words of Simeon, known by their Latin name as Nuke Dumitius, come from the first two words of the song, which translated means, Now you dismiss. We've often used them during worship after communion, where we traditionally find them in our hymnals. After communion, having received Jesus' own body and his own blood, we have seen and experienced God's salvation, prepared in the presence of all people. We have seen God's light and God's glory for all. Often these words are heard during a funeral service where we proclaim our trust that God's word has been fulfilled and our loved ones have seen God's glory. That glory that we see while being dismissed from this world in peace. Salvation also means resurrection. Hope greater than tomorrow. A peace right there in our presence as Jesus is present, even in our death, preparing to give his resurrection on the right day, but in God's time. You know, we don't need to wait four more days for, to have hope. We don't need to have a new year to live in peace. 2020 may be extinguishing or dying in four days, but Jesus Christ is here today, right now, offering himself for us, bringing life and peace to all. Because in the face of death, Jesus is our life. For he's the one truly begotten Son. Thanks be to God.
Joining our voices with Song of the Angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. After the words, hear us, O God, you may respond, your mercy is great. Night and day, all creation praises you, O God. Strengthen your church across nations, denominations, and traditions. Fill us with wisdom and unify our proclamation of your forgiveness and mercy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. All creation is holy to you, O God. You cause the earth to bring forth its shoots and gardens to spring up. Protect hibernating animals and frozen lands that wait earnestly for longer days and awakening growth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The nations are upheld by your hand, O God. Cause righteousness and praise to spring forth, inspiring leaders to serve with compassion and integrity. Send your spirit to discernment upon legislators grappling with complex decisions for the sake of the common good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send the spirit of your Son into our hearts, O God. Come quickly to the hearts that race with fear, hearts that break with grief, and hearts that long for wholeness. Reveal your power to heal and to save. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Adopt us into your family, O God. Bless our elders with the peace of joy and joy of Simeon and Anna. Strengthen those who have retired, those who work in older age, and those in need of income, food, company, or health care. Connect young and old across generations. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Let us depart in peace, O God according to your word. For John the Apostle and the Evangelist and all your saints, we give you thanks. Prepare our salvation in the sight of all your witnesses in every time and place. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God works in us and through us using all that we give to support our ministries, including the care of those in need. If you're having a difficult time, please let Pastor Deb know. If you have a stable income and can give even a little more, we greatly appreciate it. Let's be a blessing for others as Christ has been a blessing for us all. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, so that through our gifts, the world may receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen.
pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light that we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. And now let us pray together using the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now for a few announcements. If you or someone you know could benefit from pastoral contact, please let Pastor Deb know. And she will reach out however she's able. Look for the rest of the announcements to be listed in the credits at the end of the service. Good Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Give ye heed to what we say. Jesus Christ is born today. Ox and ass before him bow, and he's in the manger now. Christ is born today. Christian friends rejoice with heart and soul and voice. Now you need not fear the grave. Jesus Christ was born to save. Call you one and calls you all to gain the everlasting all. Christ was born to save. Christ was born to save. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaimed joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and led the Magi by a star, bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. We encourage everyone to reach out to others in whatever way that you're able Make a phone call, send an email, or use social media. Check in with each other as a sign of God's love and peace. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. 
Thanks be to God. Hi, I'm Patrick Newton, treasurer of St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Thank you to all the members, visitors, and participants of fundraisers and other special appeals during 2020. We have been fortunate throughout 2020 to continue with many of the programs and services you would normally expect of St. Paul's Lutheran Church. We hope to continue the same for 2021. On December 13th, St. Paul's Lutheran Church held their annual budget congregation meeting. Following that meeting, we received 62 votes, 61 of which passed the budget, one vote against. As such, we will move forward with the presented budget. Thank you again for your continued support in 2020, and we look forward to the programs and services we can provide in 2021.